Hey, hey, eighth grade. So our learning target today is I can simplify expressions containing grouping symbols. So we have parentheses, fraction bars, radicals, and absolute values. So those are our kind of our order of operations and things. So we were used to doing is just parentheses as step one. When we look at our order of operations, we say, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. You're all used to this parenthesis idea, but we're going to add a tie for first place there. So we're going to have parentheses, square roots, absolute value bars, and fraction bars are all going to take first place. So there'll be a tie for first place with all of these things before we move on to exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. So this is just our parenthesis like we're used to. This is our fraction bar. This is our radical. And this is our absolute value jail bar. So we have parentheses, fraction bars, radicals, and absolute value jail bars. Okay, <clears throat> so here we go. Order of operations on. So this is a problem that you've been doing for a really long time. Order of operations says, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Keep in mind that parentheses now in this first place is parentheses, jail bar, absolute value, or, I'm sorry, square roots, and fraction bars all take first place before the rest kick in. We don't have to do anything to worry about in this first problem. We're used to this. We're going to stop, chop, chop the parentheses. Inside the parentheses, I have $8 in the bank. I'm taking five out, leaves me with $3 in the bank. If I haven't used it, I drag it down. So that's our parentheses. We've killed parentheses. Moving on to exponents, we don't have any multi exponents. So multiplication division kicks in next. This is a triangle problem. So we have a negative 4. We have a positive 3. It gives us a negative 12. Answer is negative 12. You've been doing that problem for a really long time. So let's look at one where we have some substitution kicking in. We have a variable in there. It's still order of operations. Notice it's not an equation because in order for it to be an equation, we have to have an equal sign and a variable in there. We do not have an equal sign, which makes it what's called an expression. So we're going to take four. We're going to substitute in here and here. So I'm going to substitute in both places and just simply rewrite. So I have a four on the outside with a parenthesis. Then I have three minus the square root of four times four. Go ahead and catch up there. Everybody should be catching up there. We have 4 on the outside. We have 3 minus the square root of 4 times 4 on the inside. Okay, as I start to solve then, my job would be to do the parentheses first. So all the parentheses inside here have to be done first. Within that, though, inside that parenthesis, I have the square root. That is going to be my winner, winner, chicken dinner. So I'm going to do the square root first. I'm going to rewrite the step. Inside the square root, you have 4 times 4. So I have a 4 on the outside, 3 minus. We have 4 times 4, which is 16 with the square root over the outside. Notice I'm taking, kind of taking baby steps here. I recommend that so you don't get confused. I'm still in this parenthesis step. There's a lot going on in there. Inside there, I have to do the square root first because it's inside the parenthesis, which gives me a 4. So I end up with a 4 on the outside, and I have a 3 minus 4 on the inside. Still dealing with that parenthesis. I haven't killed it yet. I step, chop, chop. That gives me a negative 1 coming out of that parenthesis. We have 4 times negative 1. If I haven't used it, drag it down. That's a triangle problem there. Final answer is negative 4. 4 multiplied by negative 1, triangle problem is negative 4. So that's how we deal with a parenthesis. Now notice that parenthesis had a square root symbol in there. We have to take care of all that. Now if I'm going too fast, go ahead and pause that video. What we're going to work on now is the uh, evaluating a fraction bar. So what has to happen is, in this numerator, we need to get that down all to one number. Denominator has to be one number. We're already set in the denominator. It only has one number. Numerator, though, has some work to do. So I'm going to deal with that numerator first. I'm going to deal with this kind of as its own problem. This already is ready to go. In the top, then, order of operations says parentheses first. I don't have any parentheses in the top. Exponents, I don't have any exponents in the top. Multiplication, division, I do have multiplication. It's 5 times 4, which is 20. Then I subtract 8, all divided by 10. So 20 subtract 8 all divided by 10. Multiplication is done. Addition subtraction is next. So I'm going to stop, chop, chop the numerator. Gives me 12 in the numerator. $20 in the bank. I take 8 out. Gives me 12 over 10. And when I reduce 12 over 10, I can also write that as 1.2. So either you can have it as 12 over 10, 1.2, or 1 and 2 tenths which is 1 and 1 fifth. So there's really four possible answers there. 12 tenths is the improper fraction. 1.2 is the decimal. 1 and 2 tenths reduced to 1 and 1 fifth is the mixed number. So that's how we would evaluate a fraction bar. You need to get a number over a number. It's really kind of like two separate problems squished back into one with a division. 
Next problem over here, I have this fraction bar. Again, we need to get one number on the top. All of this has to be reduced down to one number and one number on the bottom before I can divide. All right, here we go. So I'm going to substitute in that 4 for the variable here. So we have 7 plus the square root of 15 times 4 minus 35, all in the numerator, divided by 3 times 4. Okay, take a look at that. Catch up. All right, as we start to solve then, we have this square root to take care of first. Remember the order of operations? Starting today, parentheses. Square roots, absolute value bars, fraction bars, they all take first place. So I'm going to deal with, I'm going to leave this 7 sitting on the outside. We have 7 plus, this becomes 60. So I have square root of 60 minus 35 in the numerator, and I have a 12 in the denominator. Inside that square root, we have 60 minus 35 using your calculator, or maybe you can mental math that, that's 25. So I really have 7 plus the square root of 25 in the numerator all over 12 in the denominator. Square root of 25 is 5. I'm trying to clean up this numerator here. So we have 7 plus 5 in the numerator. 7 plus 5 in the numerator is 12. I have a 12 in the denominator. Answer is 1. 1. Okay, so that's how we deal with fraction bars. We have to get a number on top, a number on the bottom before we can simplify. Next step is to deal with radicals or square roots. So as we start to solve then, in order to do this radical at all, we need to clean up the numerators. We have 19 plus 8. 19 plus 8. So we have 19 plus 8 is the square root of 27. Remember, you can give the square root to the top and you can give the square root to the bottom over the square root of 4. Give square root to top, give square root to bottom. It's kind of like this distributed property. In the numerator, then, I end up with getting the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. Remember, we break that apart, so our perfect squares are 1. 4, 9, 16, because this is 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, into infinity. And I'm, when I'm trying to branch this, I'm trying to branch that into two um, things that would work. So the square root of 9 is awesome, times the square root of 3 is left. This is the perfect square. Divided by the square root of 4 is 2. Cleaning this up then, the square root of 9 is 3. So we have 3 root 3 over 2 plus or minus, because we have a plus or minus coming out of any square root. Plus or minus 3, square root 3 over 2, final answer. Next problem here. Looks very similar in style. Difference is there isn't a square root in the denominator in this problem. So we're going to take this 4 and substitute. So we get square root 27 still in the numerator over 4, but it is not the square root of 4 this time in the bottom. We're not given the square root to the bottom. Breaking up 27, if we break up the square root of 27, we would say that's the square root of 9 times the square root of 3, and the square root of 9 is 3, root 3, just like the last problem, but I wanted to kind of give you a different little picture of how that works when we learned how to do it. 3 root 3 over 4, done. Plus or minus 3 root 3 over 4, done. That's how we deal with square roots called radicals, or square roots. The R, the radical. Okay, moving on to the top of the next page. Top of the next page, we have absolute value bars. All right, as I start to solve, these jail bars come first. I have to do this first. So if I haven't used to drag it down, this 50 is coming down. I stop, chop, chop that numerate or that inside of that. Becomes the absolute value of negative 10. Clean this, cleaning this up then. So this absolute value of negative 10 is positive 10. 50 plus 10 gives me 60. Final answer is 60. You look at that. Make sure you understand how we got that out of jail. All right, guys. So... Absolute value bars is also in first place. We have a four-way tie for uh, first place is what we're doing for today. We're going to substitute once, twice, three times, rewrite. Three times four times four minus two times four. Substitute that four in three times. I'll go ahead and wait for you. Everybody substituting in. Okay, as we start to substitute then. We get 12 times 4 minus 8 in the inside. Order of operations says do that multiplication first. Still trying to clean up that parenthesis. I guess I can, technically can't do this 3 times 4 yet. 
I can't do that yet because it's not in the parentheses. Sorry, I was cheating a little bit there. On the inside of that jail bar, I have stuff chuffed up. In there, I have $4 in the bank. I'm trying to take eight out. Eight out, I can't do it. We have negative four living inside a jail. If I haven't used it, drag it down. Now, I know that's going to be a 12, but I technically can't do that yet. And because it's not in the radical, or pardon me, not in the absolute value. Let's get this guy out of jail. If I haven't used it, drag it down. Now, all multiplication can kick in here. So we have three times four, which is 12. If I haven't used it, drag it down. Final answer is 48. Now, I know that 3 times 4 was going to be 12 early on anyway, but technically we should be following the order of operations to make sure we don't make any mistakes. Okay, so for our summary today, we've talked about uh, the four major ways that we take first place for the uh, order of operations. Make sure we're working from the inside out. So just keep in mind that this parenthesis is a four-way tie. It's tied with the parentheses you've always known, square roots known as radicals. These are called radicals. Absolute value jail, jail bars and fraction bars. So that's a four-way tie before exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction kick in. That is a four-way tie. Four ways. So it's a four-way tie for first place. And that fraction bar, remember, we work top, bottom, and then divide. Work all the top, work all the bottom, then divide. So we have that fraction bar. All of this all of that and then divide clean it up clean it up then divide okay our homework for tonight is to do the rest of page 11 take your time write down please excuse my dear aunt sally on the side and all of page 12 page 11 page 12 due tomorrow have a fabulous night eighth grade